much, Larry. We are here on a beautiful afternoon for football. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Atlanta Falcons and the Oakland Raiders. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gaunt. As we get set here, Charles, we talk about wide receivers. You know, Larry mentioned it in the open, but that's a big spot to look at here in this one. I think he identified it perfectly because these guys have such an impact on the game nowadays because they throw the ball more than ever. And whether they're throwing it short, medium, or long, can they snatch it out of the air and create even extra yardage with run after catch? Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go from Oakland. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Carnell on first down. Throw left side to the tight end, Walford. And nothing but daylight ahead. Pass the 20. <laughs> and all the way in. Touchdown, Oakland. Clive Walford, 75 yards. And the Raiders have taken the early lead. Just how they wanted to start this one in the end zone on their first possession. And that just happened. How about that play right there? As you said, opening possession, setting the tone for everything. Now, I'm going to look forward a little bit now because everyone should be celebrating his catch in the end zone. The tight end gets a little bit of love. But if you're a receiver on the team, you should be thinking to yourself, boy, oh, boy, things are going to open up the rest of the game if they have to focus on him as well. And that makes it 7-zip Oakland. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Man, wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Back-to-back -back runs that were stacked up. Offensively, now you've got to think to yourself, do we change blocking assignments? Do we change formations? Do we change looks in order to try and get the running game going? They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And that is incomplete. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Fielded at the 20. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Raiders will take possession. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Well, they've gone backwards so far in this series. Third and 13. Third and 13. 
Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Raiders in possession of the football. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. On play action, it's Carr. Looking deep in the direction of Cooper. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Looking for the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Amari Cooper, 27 yards. And the Raiders add on to their lead. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play, and just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well, because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. And he'll bang that one through. So that drive spanned five plays, and it winds up in six points for the Raiders. Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And last year that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. So out come the Falcons now. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession. See if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. And quickly they get to the line. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Third and two, now Ryan. And incomplete, he had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And wow, fortunately, he was able to get it back, but it's left his guys in a bit of a hole here. They're backed up deep to start this drive. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Robert Alford. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On second down, Ryan. 
Swings it out to the flat for Freeman. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Now a play fake here on first down. Fought Ryan hit, and he lost the football. A near turnover, but the offense recovers it. Now they'll try to regroup on second. And they're going to speed things up here. On second down, here's Ryan. Khalil Mack in there to get him. And this pass rush strong now. That sacks on back-to-back -back plays. Now the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. They go play action with Ryan. And Tammy with it over the middle. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. And Larry apparently very brief in his report. Thanks anyway, my man, as we're already set for action. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Falcons now making their way back out onto the field. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just, they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they felt they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet. He's going to have the first down. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty. Yep. Wiley. Oh, definitely. All the veteran names. You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. On second down, Freeman. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They get three there on the pickup. And it'll be first down Atlanta. Back now in the East Bay. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Too quick to the trigger that time. Neutral zone infraction, and that'll cost him five yards. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Tammy's got it, complete. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be second and about a yard. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Now Ryan on second down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And it's third and short. A gain of 35 that time. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal. And now they're in the hurry up. To throw again is Ryan. He goes underneath to Freeman. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and goal. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. 
get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And he is going to go down back at the 11-yard line. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. Oh, and the defender took some liberties there with a late hit, roughing the passer. The league has done a great job of defining what is a late hit and illegal contact on a quarterback. The defenders really have to get in line. Again, Ryan. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. Trying to get that in the hands of Devontae Freeman that time. And now it's second down. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will actually break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Bruce Irvin in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. On third and goal, Ryan, and he dropped it. Now it was tipped, altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it, and now fourth down. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And the Raiders are going to win the football game. And now here come the Raiders. Now last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. He's got a man complete. And all the way in. Touchdown, Oakland. Cooper, 93 yards, and the Raiders add six to their lead. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. Janikowski now for the point after. And it is now 21 to nothing. Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some <laughs> other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Off the play fake to Freeman. And he can't escape the pressure. Ryan goes down. Roughing the passer, that's shades of Charles Davis back in his playing days. Oh, I sure wish it had been, Brandon. Back in my day, I didn't hit anyone hard enough to rough the passer. I had a, no, I had a number of teammates that handled that for me. Ryan, he's got time. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude. But I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. On third down, Ryan. 
He's got time in the pocket. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Sean Smith. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. It's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down. Got a man that's caught at the six-yard line. That all the way in. Touchdown, Oakland. Amari Cooper, 44 yards. And a forced turnover on defense leads to six points. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. The here, this will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. On second down, Ryan. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. This has been a really nice day for the defense. They've made it so difficult to find open receivers because they're able to squeeze the passing lanes down. A lot of what they're doing is communicating. Receivers in one area, receivers in another area. They're almost what they call passing them. And a double coverage, and it's headers picked off by the former first-round pick, D.J. Hayden. And that will write a finish to this ball game. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. And what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team. There's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too?